sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. Welcome in. Happy Monday. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson, your host. And this special edition of Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers is brought to you by KHTS in collaboration with SCVI and iLead Schools. We come to you live each day. Monday through Friday at 9 a.m., providing support, updates, community check-ins, and all different kinds of information to help support you and your family during this distance learning journey and all the other different things that are going on out there. Wow. There are a lot of things going on out there. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that we first did when, uh, when we moved to distance learning back on uh, March 16th, we opened up a, a, a new website, homeschoolinganswers.com, and we've, uh, we've been weeding through all those different things. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that are providing all kinds of web resources, uh, free and otherwise, uh, to help support you and your kids. Make sure that that learning curve doesn't dip too much. Uh, make sure that the learning and the growing still continues. But it can be tough for an individual to weed through. You know, I was talking to one of my brothers uh, over the weekend, and... Uh, he mentioned, y- you know, Matt, this is your job. I, I, I didn't go to college for this. I, you know, how do I do this? Uh, and I know a lot of people out there are feeling the same way. I know it's been a couple of months now, but some of you are still struggling. So if you haven't been over to homeschoolinganswers.com, why don't you go over there and check it out. Uh, see what resources you, to, uh, you might want to tap into for the summertime as, as you kind of blend into the summer. The... Uh, <laughs> That, that huge hurrah that kids normally feel at the end of the school year, that teachers normally feel at the end of the school year, is, is a little bit, uh, well, I don't know that I would call it anticlimactic, but a little less climactic this year as we just kind of ease into the summer. So if, uh, if there are some resources that you want to keep your kids working on, uh, you know, there's some parenting resources on there as well you might want to check out as we move into, what is it, probably... Uh, out of month three and into month four of, of you know, everybody's kids being home with us all day long. Um, so, yeah, head on over to homeschoolinganswers.com. Check out the resources that we've got there. If there's, uh, if there's anything that, uh, that, you, uh, that you don't find or something that you're not sure what you need, um, j- just, just give, us a, a, give us a poke. Send us a message. Let us know what you're looking for, what you need, what you're struggling with, and we will put it up there. Again, that that, uh, website is homeschoolinganswers.com. Well, it is Monday, and, well, gosh, a lot has been going on since last we spoke on Friday morning. Um, There's some good news, lots of bad news. I'm not going to attempt to reset everything right now. We're going to talk a little bit later this hour about some... uh, some reflections and some things that have been going on in our community around our country uh, this weekend. Um, lots of us struggling, trying to figure out uh, what's going on and where we go from here. But, you know, we did have, um, it, it got it, it got drowned out a little bit, but we did have uh, some good news right here in Santa Clarita take place. Um, and we've got some good news happening right now, as a matter of fact. Our first round of local high school graduations is taking place today. And, and we want to recognize that, you know, Cal Arts, uh, the Arts College uh, up here, uh, they already held their, their virtual graduation, and I want to congratulate those graduates. Today, Bowman High School and Sequoia School, both of them, are going to be graduating out at Central Park, which is where William S. Hart School District has determined that they're going to have their drive through graduations. I drove by there this morning, and Bowman is already underway. Things are going well. Uh, I know it's a smaller school, but it doesn't seem to be adversely affecting traffic at all. And we will keep an eye on that as, uh, as the week goes on and the schools get a little bit bigger and, and the ceremonies drag a little bit into the afternoon because they are predicted to take quite a while. So if you're driving past Central Park, do be patient. Give yourself a little bit of extra time. And 
maybe honk the horn as you go by. You've got some incredibly resilient high school seniors graduating out there. So congratulations to the students at Bowman and Sequoia School. Congratulations, and I am sorry, you know, it's not fair the way you've had to graduate, but nonetheless, you are graduating. It's a huge accomplishment, and again, we congratulate you. Good job. Now go, go and make this world a better place. Bless you all. You know, we also had some pretty major news on Friday, shortly after we went off the air. Governor Newsom granted the variance that L.A. County had requested last week, the variance that was pushed forward by the city of Santa Clarita and, and a couple of others to the north of us here, Palmdale, Lancaster. And so we just want to go over really quickly what is open and, and what's, what's not, because I had some conversations over the evening and... Uh, uh, last evening, and there seems to be a little, a little bit of confusion. It is not all restrictions off and, and everything's open. Take off your gloves, take off your masks, and go crazy. That is not what we've moved into. We've moved into phase three. So what is newly open? Well, in-person dining is now open. Restaurants are clear to have in-person dining. Barbershops, hair salons are open. Also, flea markets, swap meets, and drive-in movie theaters were given the green light to reopen. It had been previously announced a few days earlier that churches and houses of worship were allowed to reopen. So we had some of those reopen. These new openings, of course, all of them have uh, very, uh, very clear and some of them very strict guidelines and, and, and restrictions that we need to be following so that we can reopen safely. Again, like I said, it's not just a open the floodgates and, and it's a free for all out there. There are a few things that still remain closed as well. Nail salons and spa services, including massage and facials, waxing, and tattoo parlors all remain closed. The state of California is still working on how those establishments will reopen with uh, the moniker of safety that we need. So we are now in stage three. Let's continue to open safely. I look forward to all of you posting pictures with your new professional haircuts. I know it's gonna take uh, several cuts for, uh, for the professionals to repair the damage that my son did a few weeks back. So uh, we're getting back into it. We do have an exciting week for you. We've got another great week of programming here on Eye on the Valley. We've got Debbie Dole uh, from the Assistance League joining us a little bit later this week. Superintendent Jeff Pelzell from the Newhall School District. As always, Mayor Cameron Smythe is joining us tomorrow as he does every Tuesday. You know, we've got quite a bit to talk about with the mayor. He's gonna be joining us again tomorrow. I'm sure you've got questions for him, so you can start sending those now and, and we, will, we will forward those questions to the mayor tomorrow morning. <coughs> Today, we've got Holly Schroeder. She's the president and CEO of the Santa Clarita Valley Economic Development Corporation, the SCVEDC. She's on the line right now and she'll be joining us just momentarily. We've also got Gina Bogna, COC's Dean of, school, uh, of the School of Personal and Professional Learning. And as we normally do, and, and boy, let's, Jane, let's try to give her a little bit of extra time today. We're gonna need to talk to Christina, our show's official licensed marriage and family therapist. We're gonna be talking to Christina DeBray and get her take on everything that's going on in and around our community. So let's go ahead and get started. My first guest today is Holly Schroeder. As I said, she is president and CEO of the Santa Clarita Valley Economic Development Corporation. Holly has over 25 years of management and executive experience in the private sector, governmental sector, and with nonprofit organizations. She's assisted hundreds of companies in their pursuit of growth, optimization, risk reduction, and innovation. Over, the t over that time, she's had success in advancing corporate expansions, company relocations, master plan community initiatives, and various community projects that have supported the growth of the Santa Clarita Valley, and boy, do we appreciate that. She was raised in Northeast Ohio. Uh, she's got an interesting journey, so listen to this. She was raised in Northeast Ohio, the youngest of three daughters, whose father was a college professor at Kent State. He was a professor of psychology at Kent State University, and her mother was a school psychologist. You can only imagine the conversations around the dinner table at that home. Holly graduated high school from Western Reserve Academy in Hudson, Ohio, and then went on to attend St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota. She graduated with a double major in French and in chemistry. I'm sure she's fielded more than her fair share of questions about Marie Curie, so I won't be bothering her with those today. She worked in Chicago and then moved to Portland where she earned her Master of Science degree in 2000 
from the University of Oregon. That's right, she's a duck. And she earned her master's, check this out, in applied information management, which I will be asking her about because that sounds like a really cool degree. She was also named one of the top women in, biz uh, women in business CEOs of the year in the Santa Clarita Valley in 2018. And she is an avid golfer. Good morning, Holly. How are you today? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. That was quite the background you ran on me. <laughs> well, you've got quite the background, absolutely. And I know what everybody's thinking. Holly, what's your handicap? <laughs> I'm, I'm about an 18. I would like it to be a little better. <laughs> We've hey. been you know, rusty the past few months because we haven't been able to get out. Yeah, you know, I, I was listening to uh, an old baseball player being interviewed, and he was out golfing, and they said, yeah, that's right, the golf courses are wide open. And he corrected the interviewer and said, no, 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 I said the golf courses are wide open. If you watch me play, they are not w – they're, they're open. They are not <laughs> wide open. <laughs> so, yeah, don't feel bad about that. 18 handicap you know my handicap is my golf game they actually require me to put one of those stickers on the back of my cart <laughs> so i mentioned that you have your master's in applied information management that sounds really cool C can you tell us a little bit about what that degree is um i looked into it a little bit last night and it's I it's quite innovative what is a degree in applied information management and what does it prepare you to do well, what uh, that degree does, and really what my whole career has been about, is about helping organizations move towards their goals, whatever those are, and helping individuals move towards those goals. And what applied information management is recognizing at the time is how much technology was going to play a substantial role in moving companies forward. And so it's about sort of change management, but really based in the technology and um, systems that currently, I mean, now, you know, absolutely enable our economy. It sounds like something that is really going to help you and, and, and others lead as we move into uncertain times. And uh, we'll give you that leadership. It was, it was something, I've got a high school senior at home, and, and I thought, wow, that, that'd be a cool degree for him to go off and get. So very important. I think those, I think those sort of interdisciplinary degrees are really important in, in the times of uncertainty that we're in. I mean, it's, it's, we obviously need extraordinary specialists, but we also need people who can sort of think laterally and see the connections, and that's really how we best can navigate, especially really uncertain times like we're in right now. Absolutely. As things are changing so quickly, the ability to, to think and learn and shift and lead become more and more important. So Absolutely. I talked a little bit about uh, about your your journey. So you were born in Ohio, went to college in Minnesota, then moved to Chicago, then Portland, uh, now Valencia. I notice you keep moving west. I'm a little bit worried that we might lose you to Hawaii soon. But <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about your journey and, and how you ultimately ended up here in Santa Clarita working for the SCV EDC? Well, um, so the the, sh the the short answer, the simple answer, is I've been moving to progressively milder climates, and I got <laughs> here and found that it was sunny all the time, and I was like, I'm done. This is great. Uh, but uh, in reality, it was, you know, each move was, um, you know, was unique in its own way and was about um, seeing an opportunity. I mean, I could not have mapped out a, a, the career that I've had. And so it's about seeing opportunities where they come up, recognizing what your skills are and figuring out where they are. What I've done that I've really enjoyed and I think has, has um, led me to be here at the Economic Development Corporation is really working in different sectors. So I started my career, at, well, first have you heard, my, you know, my parents very much came from academia. I started my career in the private sector. I spent a number of years on the public sector and then now working in the nonprofit sector, which is really kind of in this role especially, is the intersection between the private sector and the public sector. Right. And so it allows you to sort of be that bridge, be that translator in order to bring people together, again, in this case, to move our community forward. Very cool. So, so can you tell our listeners, give them a little bit of background about the organization that you're currently working for, the Economic Development Corporation here in Santa Clarita Valley. What is it? How does it support those of us living in and around Santa Clarita? Yeah. So the EDC is uh, about a decade old. It's actually our 10-year anniversary this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a public-private partnership uh, that is focused on increasing the job base here in the Santa Clarita Valley. 
So it is uh, the city of Santa Clarita, the county of Los Angeles, academic institutions like CalArts and College of the Canyons, and the private sector all coming together with the common goal of imp increasing the number of jobs here. And that, as we increase the jobs here, uh, does a few things. One is it provides our residents with opportunities that are local as opposed to needing to, uh, to, needing to commute out of the valley. Uh, it also increases uh, the tax base. And so that is, uh, that's really important for us to maintain the amenities that we value here in the Santa Cruz Valley, whether that be schools and parks and, you know, the other uh, infrastructure that really makes this a great place to live. Terrific. And, and those things are, are really important and uh, during normal times. But we've gone through uh, a couple of really rough months. And so I can imagine that the, the way that you're doing things at the EDC has has shifted pretty significantly. I want to take a quick commercial break and we'll get back into uh, what you guys are doing now in order to help our, our economic se sector here in the Santa Clarita Valley to, to recover. Holly, stick around with us if you will. We're going to take a quick commercial break. I want to invite our listeners to stick around as well. We're talking this morning with Holly Schroeder, President and CEO of the Santa Clarita Valley Economic Development Center. Again, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We will be right back with more. And for more information on how COVID-19 is affecting our valley, please go to hometownstation.com and click on the red banner. There you're going to find tips on the economy, health updates, special business hours, and much, much more. You're listening to SDVI Charter Schools Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. I'm your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHTS. Your building sign is essential to getting customers to your location. Feathers can help you get your business noticed. Feathers, now in a new larger space with plenty of parking. They walk you through each phase of your project with special attention to detail and quality. Feathers will provide you with a sign that you can be proud of. Your sign will draw customers in instead of having them drive by. Visit Feathers online at feathersigns.com or go to Feathers' brand new bigger location at 26017 Huntington Drive off Rye Canyon or call 298-9442. Hi, I'm Miles McNamara. Certified Senior Advisor and Owner of Comfort Keepers and Home Care. Our caregivers help you in your own home. A Comfort Keeper can provide companionship, meal preparation, medication monitoring, assistance with personal care, transportation to doctor appointments, all enhancing your independence and safety and the comfort and privacy of your own home. So if you or someone you love could use a helping hand at home, call Comfort Keepers at 287-4200. That's 287-4200. Accidents happen, but rest assured Patterson's Collision Center is here to help. Patterson's is a family-owned and operated collision repair facility providing the Santa Clarita Valley with premium collision repairs. Patterson's prides itself on being the only California certified green repair shop in all of Santa Clarita. They are insurance claim specialists and even offer payment plans for your deductible. For personalized, friendly service, visit PattersonsCollisionCenter.com or call 294-1011 and let Patterson's Collision Center help ease your worries today. Moms, dads, this is Cardin Ellis, owner of Unipest. If your house has ants, spiders, or gophers, or you want a free orange oil termite inspection, you have to call Unipest Termite and Pest Control, Santa Clarita's only factory certified orange oil pest control company. We specialize in organic, low impact, and traditional pest control options that are all kid friendly, pet friendly, and affordable with no contracts, and we're SCV owned and operated. Call us at 661-BUG-7575 or visit unipest.com. The coronavirus has put us in a position of creating a new normal. Family Law at Home understands. Their goal is to meet you in the safest place possible. And these days, that might be in your own home in a virtual meeting. Family Law at Home will provide you with immediate advice on your family law matters, such as divorce cases, child custody disputes, and domestic violence. It's as easy as going to FamilyLawAtHome.com. You'll choose your own consultation date and be in immediate contact with one of their esteemed attorneys. Family Law at Home handles the legal aspect while you and your family navigate the new chapter in your lives. Go to FamilyLawAtHome.com. Social distancing slows the spread of coronavirus, so we should all stay home to lower the risk for everyone. More info at Coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers with Matt Watson. 
We're talking this morning with President and CEO of the Santa Clarita Valley Economic Development Corporation, Holly Schroeder. Holly, thanks for sticking around with us and doing this extra segment. Uh, you talked before the break about uh, what the, uh, the role of the EDC is here in the Santa Clarita Valley um, during, well, during normal times. You talked about how uh, basically you focus on increasing the number of jobs are here in the valley, uh, helping folks uh, stay and, and nurture a career here in the community where they live, which also in turn increases the tax base for our community. Just looking to make our, our economic sector here in the Santa Clarita Valley uh, stronger and, and sturdier, but uh, a couple months ago, boy, we sure got rocked, uh, and it wasn't just a uh, a health crisis that uh, we've been going through. Because as that health crisis uh, affected business closures and, and things like that, it really turned into an economic crisis. We've seen uh, small businesses and larger corporations that have locations here in in the Santa Clarita Valley closing permanently, and uh, we've seen individuals just absolutely devastated by uh, the the current quarantine. So what is the EDC doing now? What are you guys focusing on now as it relates to the COVID-19 crisis? Yeah, so it has been an absolutely, uh, you know, shock to the system, obviously, to people individually and then to people, to the businesses that are here. So what we've Originally, well, the first thing we did was just try to be help get the information out because those first few weeks, of, uh, when the safer at home uh, order and, and shelter in place orders went into effect, there was a million questions from our businesses about who's an essential business, what are their protocols, you know, how do they work with their employees who may have risks either personally or at home. Uh, there was legislation coming out of Washington that people were trying to make sense of. So a huge part of it at, at the beginning was just trying to help people navigate what felt like uh, the the uh, the world shifting every hour or something like that. Right. And and as that um, got clearer, as clear as it could get, uh, <laughs> obviously, um, then what we've been doing the past month, or through pretty much through the month of May, is anticipating uh, the the reopening that has begun to happen. And as you mentioned, we had a, a significant step forward in those reopenings with in-room dining uh, being allowed and, and the beginning of, uh, of uh, salons and, um, and uh, barbershops, and, and et cetera. And so we're seeing uh, that progression uh, happening over the second half of May. And what uh, we have done is a series of webinars, uh, because everything's a webinar these days, right, right. <laughs> is, uh, is and that have been taking the, the knowledge from the businesses that have been open. You know, we've had manufacturing companies that have been able to stay open. We obviously have some retailers who have stayed open. We have uh, restaurants that have moved to, you know, carry out, you know, change their business model, et cetera. And they've all been going through, since the orders went into place, you know, a iterative learning process with their employees, with their customers of figuring out how to keep everybody safe. Uh, they they try they do something their employees say hey I think there's a maybe this is an issue and they go okay how do we deal with that <laughs> and it's been this you know com, you know this uh, uh, ongoing learning process for everybody because we've never seen this before and what we wanted to do was take that knowledge that these companies that have been open have and start transmitting it to the companies that are starting to reopen and make sure they're thinking about things and and you know understanding where they may have blind spots or they might have taken them a week to figure it out now they figure it out a day, those types of uh, experiences. So we did a series of webinars on a lot of different topics. We talked about your physical space. We talked about working from home. We talked about managing employees. We, you know, all of these types of, of topics, and they've just been really helpful. We've gotten just tremendous feedback from the businesses about helping them think through, you know, how they move from sort of this initially sort of chaotic, uncertain world into living with the virus because we know that that's probably what our future holds. And so you have to take, you know, changes you implemented rapidly, rapidly and now you got to figure out how do you make those more permanent or more ongoing and make them a better system and such. And so that's really what we've been helping businesses do because, of course, if there's an outbreak in a business, not 
you know, obviously it has a huge impact on Santa Cruz Valley, but, you know, it could put, shut that business down entirely, which would be devastating both to the business and to all of their employees right. and our larger community. So <clears throat> we want to do everything we can to prevent any outbreaks from happening. So we're trying to equip everybody with as much knowledge as possible. That is fantastic. And are those webinars archived somewhere that business owners can, can access them, view them? Yeah, absolutely. They can either get them on the uh, SCVEDC uh, YouTube page, or we have a landing page, scvedc.org slash scaling up. Because it was all about our businesses getting back to business and scaling back up to a more normal workforce and more normal services that it can provide. Fantastic. We'll get those websites posted on the Facebook live feed for you if, if you're interested in them. But uh, again, scvedc.org backslash scaling up is, is where you can find those resources. So, Holly, I've been talking to um, some business owners and, and, and their, their relatives, and, and some of them have been saying, look, under these new guidelines, it's not going to be possible for me to, to reopen my business successfully. For example, I've got a small restaurant, and if I've got to sit people every other booth and maintain m maybe the, the same uh, crew of employees that I, I used to maintain or even more in order to, to, to help follow the guidelines – it's not economically feasible for me to reopen my doors. What do you think that businesses can do or, or what can our residents do to help support recovery from this shutdown? Well, certainly we want to encourage all of our residents to, to visit our local businesses and use our local businesses uh, because we do want these uh, businesses to make it through this transition. Uh, as time goes on and we have you know, potential treatments, antivirals, eventually a vaccine, uh, we, we want these businesses to be here, right? right. So uh, everything that our residents can do to, to patronize these, these companies is, is going to be really great. Uh, we're also, you know, in discussions, uh, you're seeing in some areas where, uh, you know, sort of the way things used to be isn't necessarily the way things are going to be in the future. Uh, maybe we're going to see uh, some restaurants be able to utilize maybe more sidewalk space or more parking lot space to increase their foot, um, you know, increase their uh, number of tables, but maintaining those social distancing and putting people outside. We have great weather here. We ought to take advantage of that. You know, so we're really trying to get, get our businesses to think creatively about things that will help them and work with our, um, our public officials, work with our businesses to come up with those types of solutions. Yeah, these times are, are, are not times to sit back and just wait for everything to go back to normal because they, they, they may head into, and I know it's become cliche to say that, that new normal, but if you're not ready or, or willing to be creative and, and shift, uh, you could be left behind. So, Holly, we really appreciate uh, the, the leadership that you're showing out there and, and, and helping others uh, kind of think creatively and, and, and get back online as, as quickly as possible but as safely as possible. So I, I want to shift to kind of kind of broad spectrum and, and, and have you look back. You've been with the EDC for, for several years now. Mm -hmm. um, as the head of the, the, the EDC, what's been your proudest accomplishment and, and why? Well, I think um, later this year we're going to see um, Logic's Federal Credit Union uh, move their flagship headquarters from Burbank to the Santa Cruz Valley. And uh, they – have been in, had been in Burbank for 80 plus years. Uh, they are have been a great community um, partner uh, across the Santa Cruz Valley. They have several branches here, but them moving their headquarters up here um, is just a really great accomplishment. They're great jobs. About a third of their employees already live up here, and we just think that they're going to be a great institution for us to have here over time. So, so that, in terms of a business attraction, is probably one of our proudest things. But I think overall what I'm, I'm really pleased with is just the recognition of, you know, the relationship between what happens in the business community, what happens in the public sector, how our academic institutions support it, and everybody kind of coming together, as I talked about earlier, for that common um, goal of increasing our jobs and really making this community uh, as strong as it can be, as vibrant as it can be. And bringing everybody together uh, under the banner of the EDC, I often say, think, you know, that economic development is a team sport. I mean, it, it only works when everybody is working together. Uh, and uh, I think we've really done a lot of that over the past 10 years with the EDC, and I'm very proud of that. Well, you should be. Um, Logix uh, has got uh, 
you mentioned Logix. They've got several locations already here in the valley, and, and what a coup to, to be able to get their headquarters up here. That would uh, bring in some, some significant strength to our our economic uh, uh, sector here is as we recover, so we appreciate that and, and all the relationships that you're building uh, across the different sectors. I want to step into, if you don't mind, Holly, uh, a little bit of your your personal uh, experience and journey. I know a couple years ago you experienced a significant health scare. Do you mind if we talk about that for a second? Can you? Yeah, sh yeah sure. Can sure. you tell us uh, what happened and how it affected your personal and professional outlook? Yeah, so I was having um, some vision problems, which uh, I at first attributed to aging. <laughs> you know, you, people, you start to think you need your readers a little bit more and such. Uh, and I went in for my regular uh, annual eye exam, and uh, the, the doctor said, no, everything on your eye is fine. Something else is going on, and went through a series of uh, doctors and eventually getting an MRI, and they realized that I had a brain tumor. Uh, which was fortunately benign, fortunately operable, but was it was basically sitting in a place in my brain where it was squeezing the optic nerve. Mm. And so if it wasn't uh, removed, um, it would have blinded me. And, uh, and so it was, um, it was a very scary time, right? Because even though the tumor itself was uh, benign, which I was very, very grateful for, you're still um, ending up having brain surgery. You are, you know, all of that is very sensitive. Something goes wrong, and yeah. it goes really wrong. And so it was a very scary time. I was, um, I had the surgery here at Henry Mayo and um, had an absolutely phenomenal um, team of neurologists uh, here that uh, and neurosurgeons that that took care of me and it was I have to say that you know I mean it's I'm obviously you know with my role at the EDC you know very um, knowledgeable of the community assets and the things that we have here and I knew what a great hospital uh, Henry Mayo was but that was really the first serious time of me witnessing it <laughs> from the um, from, the, from inside, the inside yeah. you know so to speak and uh, and just uh, what a what a gem we have in having a community hospital, right? You know, where this is still a hospital that is um, operated and owned, if you will, by the community. It has a board of directors that, that, you know, is in charge of what happens here. It's not part of a larger health system where, you know, some, you know, some, uh, um, you know, somebody remotely is deciding what happens at your hospital. It's led by community volunteers, and and I think you could really see it with the caring that I um, I felt from pretty much everybody I interacted with. And um, so obviously it went fine. Surgery went well. Uh, I have uh, not had any recurrence of the tumor, um, at least so far. And I'm very, very pleased about that. And um, But it definitely is one of those things that makes you learn to savor, you know, every moment and focus on what you think is important. And um, and so it was, um, you know, very, you know, I was lucky, had a very happy ending in, in, as, uh, as time went on. Um, but I'm, um, and I'm grateful for the great care I got at Henry Mayo. Mm. And we're grateful for the care that you're giving to uh, to our businesses and, and those of us that, that live and work in, in the Santa Clarita Valley. Holly, you are so inspiring, and we really appreciate everything that you're doing to help us get back up and, and running and back to leading the business community that we're, we're used to being. You, you take care of yourself. We, we appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. Thank you. Of course. We're going to take another quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be – Taking a bit of a look at some of the news affecting our, our community here in the Southland and, and across the, uh, the country, you are listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. This is Bradley Gross from Santa Clarita Grocery. Santa Clarita Grocery serves fresh groceries to families, individuals, and those experiencing homelessness. 
At Santa Clarita Grocery, out of every dollar donated, a full 99 cents goes directly to the needs being addressed. As an all-volunteer-led organization, we operate on a 1% overhead, receiving no government funding for our operations in the community, resulting in us being one of the most efficient charities in the Santa Clarita Valley. If you're looking to support the good for our community, please consider partnering with us by donating to Santa Clarita Grocery. What is donated is specifically kept in the Santa Clarita Valley, helping over 3,000 families, including five other community charities. Please visit our website, santaclaritagrocery.org, or visit us on social media or call us at 425-7575. That's 425-7575. At iLead Agua Dulce, we believe the most important thing a child can learn in school is who they are. Life's real tests are never standardized, which is why we've developed an individual-based curriculum that values exploration, cooperation, and creativity. As our learners grow, so do we. Our tuition-free charter school is currently enrolling grades TK through 7th and adding 8th grade in 2020. Your young learner will be immersed in a unique environment where possibility and self-discovery are at the core of every experience. The Agua Dulce campus features beautiful indoor and outdoor spaces for hands-on inspiration, including a robotics lab, a garden bed, a greenhouse, and a technology-based exploratorium. Islet Agua Dulce is conveniently located on the east side of the Santa Clarita Valley, just off the 14 freeway. Check out our homeschool options too. To schedule a campus tour or learn more about our programs, visit isleadaguadulce.org. We're enrolling now. Islet Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. Yes, Duncan is open. The continued stay-at-home orders have been rough on all of us, but Duncan is trying to make things just a little bit better. There are many ways to get your Duncan fix. You can carry out at both locations, or you can drive through at Canyon Country, or get curbside service at the Bouquet Canyon Duncan. Both offer Grubhub and Postmates delivery and are open till 6 p.m. Don't forget, use your Duncan app for on the go to order, pay, and accumulate points. Duncan cares about the SCV. If you'd like to take your business up a notch, take a look at Elite Magazine. Linda and Mo Hafizi, owners of our Valley's two leading magazines, the Magazine of Santa Clarita and Elite. I'm so proud of Elite. It allows your advertisement to stand out. We distribute Elite to 50,000 homes and businesses. You'll find us in 1,900 local hotel rooms. Discover how Elite Magazine can help your business. Call 294 4444. Superior quality is second nature to us. Just ask our advertisers. Save water and save money. SCV Water wants to help you find your fit and take advantage of conservation rebate programs that will help you save. Water your landscape more efficiently. Replace your lawn with water-wise plants. Conduct free in-home water surveys. Cover your swimming pool and more. Find the programs that fit your needs and start saving today. Visit conserve.yourscvwater.com to learn more. That's conserve.yourscvwater.com. Social distancing slows the spread of coronavirus. So if you have a fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going in. More info at coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ag Council. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. You know, we mentioned it in the intro, and, and I want to just ha take a little bit of time to, to talk about the, the news uh, here in our community and, and around the country, around the world, really. Over the weekend, we saw demonstrations, uh, again, all over the country, indeed, around the world, protests uh, protesting the... Uh, the unconscionable killing of, of George Floyd in, in Minneapolis. In many places, those demonstrations turned, unfortunately, to riots and, and looting, as, as they can often do. And I won't go too deeply into those things. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of news outlets out there that if you want to take a deep dive on that, you, you can head to those. But I do want to share a, a couple of things. Um, <laughs> you know, it's interesting as parents how we uh, oftentimes will filter news, especially uh, such uh, historical happenings as, as we had 
over the weekend, we filter it oftentimes through the eyes of, uh, of our own children. Um, so Saturday night, as, as we watched things unfold, I had a, a rather lengthy exchange with my 20-year-old daughter um, as, as we were seeing different things happening and, uh, you know, what we were, we were seeing in, in Los Angeles. Uh, and, and my 20-year-old texted me, and she just said, I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at this, and she mentioned kind of a two-sided uh, uh, thing, as, as, as we uh, often, many of us saw over the weekend. And she says to me, Dad, I don't know how to feel. And my first reaction, my, my gut reaction, was, uh, was my response to her. If you don't know how to feel, good, good. This is much too, I told her, this is much too complex to develop a quick opinion and dig your heels in. Uh, you know, often in life, if we develop a quick opinion uh, that takes one side against another, uh, especially engendering hatred, uh, you're probably missing something, right? And and so if if you're digging your heels in on one side or the other and and uh, and throwing verbal bombs at what you perceive to be the other side, you might you might be missing something. Um, and I will say this: there were literally millions of stories out there over the weekend, stories that made us sad, angry frustrated, some that, that may have inspired or encouraged us. And, and I, I was prepared to share a story this morning, shared it with my other child late last night, and, and he, uh, he helped me see it in a little bit different light. Um, I do want to share the story with you really quickly. In Flint, Michigan, uh, Genesee County Sheriff Chris Swanson was maneuvering with his deputies down the street, and when they encountered a group of protesters, uh, they stopped, and there were a couple of seconds of, of, of tense stares. And then Sheriff Swanson himself, actually, he took off his riot helmet, and he ordered his deputies to put their batons on the ground. And he moved into the midst of the crowd, and, and he started by saying, and, and some beautiful quotes, uh, he said, the only reason that we're here is to make sure that you've got a voice. That's it. These cops love you. And, and I thought those words were beautiful, but... He did something that I thought was really, really poignant. He, he continued uh, by, by asking. He said, he said, we're here to protect and serve you. What do you need? Uh, and, and I think that really took the protesters, protesters back a little bit. Um, uh, he asked the demonstrators what they needed. And, well, someone in the crowd quickly shouted back, walk with us. And then the crowd immediately started chanting, walk with us. And, and so he did. He, he started walking with them. And, uh, you know, here's my hope. Um, do you remember several weeks back when, uh, when we did our study on the seven habits together? We talked about the seven habits of highly successful people, what it takes to, to be successful, what it takes to raise successful children in the, in the 21st century. We talked about Covey's principles. We talked about habit five, pretty pretty. Uh, in depth, uh, habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Highly effective people lead with their ears and their hearts. They, they truly do listen to understand. A and sometimes that can be difficult to, to understand other perspectives because we see things in, in the light that, that we, uh, or, or through the filter that, that our own life's experiences have given us, and it's hard to put in somebody else's filter uh, on our eyes, and that can be difficult. Um, and, you know, I, I shared this story with my, my son, my 17-year-old son, and i got to tell you, he was unimpressed. Um, and he seemed to be even more frustrated by this. And I couldn't figure out why. I went to bed a little frustrated. Um, couldn't figure out, uh, you know, what the deal was. We were starting to see that, okay, we're moving forward. Things are getting better, and that's encouraging. I'm always, you know... Those that know me know that I look at life through rose-colored glasses, and I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, hey, you know, look at your own background. Maybe you can afford to, to see life that way. And as I woke up this morning, I started thinking to myself, you know, maybe I am a little too quick to look at the bright side. Maybe I'm a little too quick to, um, to see, okay, we're getting better. Let's, let's move on. You know, there are some things that, that we, need to, we need to sit on for a little bit. Um, so I'm just kind of reexamining my, myself, my own thoughts right now, and, and maybe, uh, maybe I need to not be so quick to, 
see the good and, and, and move on. Because, you know, the Watts riots took place in 1965 here in L.A. And about 27 years later, we had the uh, what are now called the L.A. riots uh, following the, the Rodney King uh, saga. That was 27 years. You know, it's been just over that. It's been 28 years since the L.A. riots. A and here we are again. Um, so maybe it's not, not time to move on. Maybe we do need to sit here and listen a little bit more. We need to listen with our ears, listen with our hearts, listen to, to understand, because in, in another 27, 28 years, I do not want to find ourselves back in this same place. So just, just you know, before you, you judge, before you point, before you label, before you uh, see solutions, before you see improvement, make sure you're listening and try to listen to everybody's perspective. All right, we do have some local and national news perspectives, and I want you to, to listen to those as well. Stick around. When we come back, we're going to be talking about how to get a free education here in Santa Clarita. That's right. You are listening to SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers, with your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHTS. Did you hear this? A Royal Suite Home Furnishings. Their Memorial Day sale is so big, they had to extend it all the way through Sunday. Yeah, this Sunday. Save 56% throughout the store on mattresses, dining sets, sofas, sectionals, recliners, bedroom sets, kids' furniture, and more. Take advantage of convenient curbside pickup. For over 40 years, A Royal Suite Home Furnishings has supported the Santa Clarita community. Now it's our turn to shop local, all while saving 56%. Visit today for convenient curbside pickup at A Royal Suite Home Furnishings near Sam's Club. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town New Hall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. David Cantrell and Fred Arnold of American Family Funding join KHTS to discuss and shed some light on how the coronavirus impacts Santa Clarita residents financially. Okay, so Fred, people are sheltering in place or just staying home, mm -hmm. uh, but they're thinking about interest rates and they're thinking about their own mortgages. W what can they do right now? Of the you're probably one of the eleven trillion dollars in loans out there, mortgage loans mm -hmm. out there. There, half of them could easily refinance because interest rates have dropped uh, rather dramatically. As rates have gone up just a little bit in the short term, call your mortgage professional right away. Your community mortgage professional and do a quick interview, do a quick analysis. Was it, when interest rates get to here, here, or here, does it make sense to, mm -hmm. to refinance? Does it make sense to take cash out to cover some debt, to cover some college funds? Mm -hmm. Prepare for the future, because the future is gonna get better without a doubt, number one. Some do it online, and we do have an application where you can do it all online. So mm -hmm. if your mortgage professional is busy, ask them, do you have an application online? But it's no substitute to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your professional does it make sense to refinance? So that's the first thing you could do. The second thing is prepare your paperwork. Mm -hmm. Get your taxes completed. Know where your W-2s are. Know where your financial documents are. During these challenging economic times of uncertainty, if you instead of cleaning out your closet, maybe clean out your financial records and know where everything is. Right. That would be right. very, very helpful. And last but not least, Dave, when you send information to your mortgage professional, make sure they send a secure link to send documents back so that the, the information, your in, private information is not compromised. Absolutely, that's uh, very, very important. And we do have that link here in American Family Funding where it comes over encrypted and completely safe. So. Absolutely, yeah. just give us a call at, or your mortgage professional will get that done. Right. KHTS, AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 10 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. Protesters comes in the aftermath of another month of violent protests in 
dozens of American cities. Attorney General Bill Barr, who is also on the video conference call, told Governor Ben Nisi of his words dominate the streets and control not to react to crowds purchasing to go out with troublemakers. In Washington, John Decker, Fox News. Joe Biden says the president's rhetoric is moving the country backward. This is us. Segmented us. When we have somebody in power who's really got to do the same thing in Iraq, he's been got to do it in Iraq. The presumptive Democratic nominee holding a community event at his church in Wilmington, Delaware. The president criticizing Biden and Democrats in general in a series of tweets suggesting the radical left is working to get anarchists out of jail. As protests have grown across the country over the death of a black man in police custody in Minnesota, there have been hundreds of arrests during violent confrontations and criminal activity, including looting and setting fire. The New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio has hoped that. We saw more and more of peaceful demonstrators coming to the fore and establishing a different tone, a different reality. People who are from communities want change, want it done the right way, the peaceful way. More evidence, he says, yesterday than in previous days that a curfew is being considered. The city is just getting set to begin reopening next Monday from pandemic shutdown. New York's governor reporting 54 deaths yesterday from coronavirus compared to 800 in one day at the height of the outbreak. America is listening to Fox News. I'm Nick Sobolewski, a select board agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray, has a $300,000 group life insurance policy but is changing jobs and can't take it with him. Well, I shopped the many highly rated term life insurance companies we represent and found Ray, who is 41 and takes medication to control his cholesterol, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $27 a month. That's almost twice the coverage for less than half of what he had paid. If SelectCorp hasn't shopped for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote, call 800-597-0315. That's 800-597-0315. 800-597-0315. Or go to selectquote.com. Since 1985, we shop, you save. Get full details on these deals at selectquote.com. over the weekend, California. In Los Angeles, protesters started out Friday night downtown, but then moved into Beverly Hills and West Hollywood on Saturday, burning police cars and local businesses. Sunday, they moved into Santa Monica. Father Elias Lyman was claiming graphic graffiti off of his church Sunday. He said he supports the protesters' motivations, but... I just picked him up at the church. He was making fun of us, and uh, was walking in a way to... Uh, to defend any cause. The FBI confirmed that Federal Protective Services Officer Dave Underwood was among two federal officers shot Friday in Oakland in a drive-by. He was killed. Motive is unclear, but there is one report that it may have been linked to protests. Fox News' Jessica Rosenthal, a man was killed in Louisville where police say they and the National Guard returned fire when someone fired at them. Also under investigation, the death of a man in Omaha. Police in Omaha say a 22-year-old protester was shot and killed near a protest late Saturday. Violence played out in the city. We're told an arrest was made, that a man is being detained. No word right now what led to the shooting that follows days of violence. A significant amount of criminal behavior has included shootings, violence against first responders, a peaceful protester, vandalism of public and private property, looting of businesses. Omaha Mayor Gene Stauffer declaring a state of emergency and implementing curfews in the city, where much like others across the country, protests start peacefully and devolve into violence. Jeff Manosco, Fox News. State and federal investigations continue into the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis one week ago at the start of the protest. The officer who kneeled on his neck was charged with murder. I'm Lisa Brady, and this is Fox News. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220, Canyon Country, California, K260CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California. Hi, I'm Eric Goldhurst, head of operations for Burger King North America. Throughout this time, we've taken steps to take care of our guests. 
And since we know many of your jobs have been affected by this crisis, we want to help make sure you're taken care of too. If you are looking for work, we are hiring. And there's a spot on our team for you. We know that we'll get through this together as long as we keep taking care of each other. For more information, call 253-3283. That's 253-3283. Hi, I'm Miles McNamara, certified senior advisor and owner of Comfort Keepers and Home Care. Our caregivers help you in your own home. A Comfort Keeper can provide companionship, meal preparation, medication monitoring, assistance with personal care, transportation to doctor appointments, all enhancing your independence and safety in the comfort and privacy of your own home. So if you or someone you love could use a helping hand at home, call Comfort Keepers at 287-4200. That's 287-4200. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, The Way Out Recovery SCV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call The Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited, affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, real estate developers, realtors, contractors, businesses, nonprofit organizations, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker is one of Santa Clarita's leaders, consistently listed as one of our most influential. When everything is on the line and you need legal counseling, Visit HackerLawGroup.com. Hey there, it's Tori with your hometown station weather. A mix of sun and clouds today with a high of 85. Overnight lows in the mid-60s. For anything and everything Santa Clarita Valley related, go to HometownStation.com or find us on Facebook at KHTS Radio. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Matt Watson, your host. You are listening to Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. And that uh, announcement by Tori right before we came back is is absolutely uh, very, very important. There's news that continues to develop uh, in and around our community. And uh, I know there's already folks asking questions, you know, what's going on? Are we going to have the same curfew that we had last night. Um, is that going to be something that's that's localized? What's what's going on? There have been no announcements here in the Santa Clarita Valley or the greater Los Angeles County area yet. Some of the other uh, cities and municipalities uh, a little bit more directly affected by, by some of the violence overnight um, uh, have already announced their curfews for, for this afternoon, this evening. Um, but no announcements affecting the, the Santa Clarita Valley yet. But you're going to want to stay tuned to uh, your hometown station, KHTS, as, as news does develop. Make sure that you get those updates. Or, uh, you know, you can always, like Tori said, check in on our website, hometownstation.com, or the KHTS radio Facebook page for, for those updates. We will have them up and, and ready to announce as soon as they come out. We're joined now by Gina Bogna. She is the uh, Dean of the School of Personal and Professional Learning at College of the Canyons here in town. Gina and her family are longtime residents of the SCV. Gina has worked in higher education for over two decades now. During her tenure, she's worked in multiple capacities within the community college system, including student advising, director of community and continuing education, director of internships and career services, Dean of Career Services and Special Programs, and her current role as the Dean of the School of Personal and Professional Learning. Gina uh, recognized early in her career her passion for career education and became an advocate for career exploration and programs that lead to employment. Under her leadership, the College of the Canyons Internship Program has been recognized as the Program of the Year for the California Internship and Work Experience Association three different times. It's amazing. 
Her favorite hobby is playing with, I love this, playing with the magnific Magnificent Seven. Those are her seven grandchildren, of course. And enjoying time with Glenn, her husband of over 37 years. Gina is a community college champion who graduated from COC and earned her BS degree in organizational management from the University of La Laverne. Her master's in administration from California State University of Bakersfield. Gina, welcome to the show. It's good to have you. Thank you, Matt, for having me. Of course. So would you start by telling us a little bit about uh, the, the school that you're dean of, the, the School of Personal and Professional Learning? You guys offer free classes to the community. Am, am I correct? Can you tell us a little bit about that? You bet. And I just want to start with it, the free classes offered through College of the Canyons to the School of Personal and Professional Learning are the best kept secret in the Santa Cruz Valley. So um, there are classes that are typically shorter in length than the average classes, uh, college classes. They're typically um, they have two to four meetings. Some of them might have eight meeting times. Um, and they're in very specific areas. First, just to reiterate, it is these classes are free. Um, and the classes range anywhere from getting your GED, some career skill building classes, um, there are ESL classes, computer classes. Honestly, we have probably 100 different courses in our inventory. We're currently offering about 20 different courses this semester um, in, well, this coming semester in summer and in fall. And then we will be rolling out more and more classes come 2021. Well, gosh, that, you're right. That is probably one of the best kept secrets here in the Valley. You know, I've lived here myself for coming up on 40 years and, and didn't realize, uh, it, you know, I, I get there that a lot of organizations, educational organizations, offer a free class here and there, you know, some sort of community service to give back. But you guys, are, you're not just offering a free class here or there. Uh, you're, you're talking about what can be transformational courses to help get people uh, started in a career or, or back on their feet. You know, a lot of us are, are, are going through a serious economic shift right now. Um, uh, Gina, as a matter of fact, uh, while we were chatting off the air, I received a text from a friend of mine who, due to the different things that we've been going through, is, is experiencing a career change and was asking me, do you know anybody that's hiring? Um, can you talk to me about some of the folks that... Uh, that join your program a little bit. Um, who are you seeing come to the, the program and, and what is it that they're doing, both traditionally, maybe in, in previous years, but then also during this time? Well, it's hard to say during this time because I haven't had a lot of face-to-face -face time with them, as you can imagine. Mm, we had to move remotely, as everybody has. Um, but our vocational, our, they're considered short-term vocational, and the state allows us to offer these courses for free in, in one of nine categories. And, and what I had just, you know, listed off earlier, and one of those categories is short-term vocational. So it could be something like um, uh, construction, construction technology. Um, what are some of the other ones? My vocational, uh, human resources management. Uh, we have a new instructional aid program. These are um, short-term programs that are intended to get people skills right away so that they could go into the workforce and, and get a job that starts off usually as an entry-level um, program, but it has a viable career path. Mm -hmm. um, the courses that and programs that we select to offer, they have to be approved by the state with the intention that there's a viable career path with, with them. It's not their final job. It's their first job in a series of then augmenting their skills, um, you know, to get increased responsibility, increased pay, um, things of that nature. So, we um, also offer these not just to get started in a job, but it can also can be used for career exploration. A lot of our, our students exiting high school uh, just don't know what they want to do. They won't necessarily want to go on to a four-year college right away. Um, and then there are people who are already working in a particular industry. They may already be working in, in a business capacity, maybe an administrative. And an example would be the human resources certificate. So that would augment somebody's already existing skills um, that they, they would then have take a series of three or four classes that would, you know, pr potentially move them into um, advancement at their job. Okay. So what I love about how you're, you're teaching these classes is 
you mentioned, you meet two, four, maybe at most eight times. You guys are just cutting it down to the meat and potatoes. He, here, here's almost like a, a boot camp in this specific career. Here, here's some basic things that, that you can learn, that you can apply immediately, that as we go back into, let's face it, what is becoming an extremely competitive uh, uh, job-seeking environment, here are some things that you can take right away that are going to give you a leg up on the competition, right? Right. And then, um, for example, we have Spanish for healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, our, our healthcare providers um, and are on the front line right now. Um, and there are some classes for them that um, they can learn Spanish that's specifically um, related to the terminology that is used in their day to day um, jobs to help communicate with their patients. So, you know, that's just another example of somebody who's already in a career, mm -hmm. but this could augment their, um, it's not, not just augmenting potentially for an advancement, but to help them do their job better and to better serve um, their patients. We have, um, I love our career skills program. Um, these are little four hour classes that meet twice over two weeks. And um, they're almost like those soft skills that people talk about so often that um, you can teach somebody, you know, how to swing a hammer, ha hammer, but you can't necessarily teach somebody kind of those soft skills. But And we, we've um, attempted to do that through um, our curriculum, you know, management in the workplace um, or workplace communication, customer service, writing for business. Uh, we hear from employers that, you know, gee, our students could use, our young employees could use a little bit more critical thinking skills mm -hmm. and um, so a lot of these classes, like I said, that are two and four hours long, they're free. They don't go on the transcript. Um, you know, they really um, help people just get that one more piece in, in their tool belt. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned that uh, you're teaching a lot of those soft skills. And I have found uh, as we continue to move forward uh, as a country, those things that we consider soft skills, if you don't have those, it's going to turn into a very hard career path because, uh, you know, there are very few careers out there that don't require you to problem solve, like you said, interact with, with, with others. And if you don't have those basic skills, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a tough road to hoe for you. So have you got what – what are some of the other offerings that you've got for people out there? What are some of the other classes that you've got coming up? Well, I love our new program. We used to have a super robust – um, classes for older adults that are free and back in 08 we had to cut them all because of state funding and even though we're going into a recession now we we've, we've really made a commitment to build our older adult curriculum and the older adult is defined as anybody that's 50 years old or older um, so 50 plus but actually anybody it's not like we look for ID or that we <laughs> ask for ID um, their are classes maybe to help you uh, manage and plan for retirement, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps healthy aging on, um, you know, nutrition, um, things of that nature, how to manage a caregiver or a care provider. So maybe, you know, these, these young adults who are in these um, sandwich generation that have their, they have children at home and they're caring for their parents, they may be good candidates to take some of these classes. Um, their exercise classes, and we're really building that program. Um, so uh, we're excited for that. We, we really are we're re working with the senior center. We're working with, we're advertising to um, all of the uh, senior, um, not just facilities as, such as nursing homes, though we are reaching out to them where, where active seniors are. I mean, I fall in that category. Um, so we're just calling awareness that we offer these classes. We're offering them online in uh, summer and fall, and we hope to return face-to-face -face in, um, in 2021, so as soon as winter is what we're looking for. Yeah, we, you mentioned, you know, with this shift, and, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, where and, and how you're offering these classes in, in just a little bit, but I'm looking at the list of some of the things that you sent over. You've got a Green Gardener program. What, what is that program about? The, the Green Gardener program, um, it's, so this is, could be either for somebody who's a private resident who wants to uh, learn how to manage their irrigation 
and uh, learn how to, I mean, we have a lot of people who have large pieces of property out here, Sand Canyon, Placer Rita, Hasley Canyon area, but even your own basic resident, um, it, be a water-wise um, person in, in how you're managing your irrigation. And it's held at the Castaic Lake Water Agency. Um, that will will resume that next year. We had to cancel it this spring because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also intended for people who are maybe in the landscape maintenance field. So somebody who has potentially their own um, their own lawn route, or somebody who does you know landscape maintenance for a living, um, to help them augment their skill set to to be a better you know maintenance worker in in, in landscape. So. Um, I, I, my husband enjoyed a very lucrative career with the, um, working in parks and recreation, specifically in parks, where he started off mowing lawns mm. um, for a city, and then he learned irrigation, and, and his, his uh, career soared and enjoyed a 30-year career with a city, and, um, was, and it was directly related to that first, where he first augmented his skill set, where he went from mowing lawns to really figuring out the irrigation for any place that was green, wherever you looked that was public uh, property, the parks, the breezeways, um, the medians. And it, it's really, you just don't know when you learn something new how you can build on that. You get a passion for it. And, and that's where when you gave my bio and, and said that, you know, read that, I have a passion for career education because not every person is, you know, wired to go and get a four-year degree or go on and get a master's. Um, you know, our society is saturated with people with bachelor's degrees that have paid way too much money, but they don't necessarily, they're underemployed. You know, they're baristas and they have bachelor's degrees in, you know, X and whatever it <laughs> is. So I, I really love that we can use any of our classes as career exploration. And if it's not a career exploration opportunity like that, wa- Waterwise Gardener, it's something that will give them an edge moving forward. The GED, um, there are people who are, you know, 20, 30, 40 years old, and they want to go get a promotion, and they find out, the employer finds out they don't have a, um, they don't have their high school diploma or their GED. Well, we give them that, that opportunity to do that for free. Um, and it's, it's exciting to be part of helping people um, improve their lives. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, with uh, this r- radical shift that we experienced in in, in mid-March, we saw how important uh, basic computer skills are becoming. And y- you mentioned before you guys have got computer classes that you're offering. You know, I work in the education field, and oftentimes uh, uh, we've, we've got folks, and not necessarily um, the, uh, the older teachers, uh, but a lot of younger teachers who have – traditionally said, mm, you know what, I'm not really big on, on computers or computer skills. I'll let the kids do that as, as they need, but, but that's not really my, my area of strength. That's not my fort. Well, then all of a sudden, literally over a weekend, we shifted to distance learning where teachers needed to be online and, and needed to be able to manage Google Suite and needed to be able to run Zoom conference calls with their, their kindergartners or their, their eighth graders. And all of a sudden, not being computer savvy just wasn't an option for people out there. And, and, and I love the way you guys are saying, okay, come on in here for a couple of weeks, a couple of meetings, and, and, and we'll get you up to speed pretty quickly. And, and then if uh, you know, you're interested in a little bit deeper or, or, or longer course, you can enroll there at the college as well, right? A- ab- absolutely. That's a, you, you quite articulate the way you put it. Absolutely. We want people to come in. We can get you started because if you – sign up for a college credit class that attaches, first of all, has fees, right. and it goes on your transcript, which is great because many of us and most of us want to go down that route. But if you don't even have the basic computer skills to join that computer class, you're going to be overwhelmed. So come take one of these classes in word processing, just learning the terminology, how to use a mouse, how to, how to save, how to escape, how to um, attach something and send it through email get you your basic foundation down, you're not going to leave there an expert by any stretch of the imagination. We're not selling it as that. But we are selling it that we can get you started. We can introduce you to it, to a whole new world um, of our new reality. And it's not going away. 
Um, this isn't temporary. Um, everybody needs to have skill sets. And even I'm so proud of our, our, our older adult population that have stuck with us and um, moved from a face-to-face -face environment to a fully online environment, mm -hmm. whether it's through Zoom or, um, you know, Google Hangouts or whatever it is that they're, how they're communicating with their faculty. Um, but there are people who, who dropped out that didn't want to or just didn't feel comfortable moving forward. And we want to be able to um, have everybody feel comfortable with te technology um, because, like I said, it's, it's not going away. It's here to stay. You're absolutely right. And, you know, I found the perfect way to get grandparents involved in technology. Now, I don't necessarily recommend this for everyone, but, <laughs> Gina, about – gosh, what was it, maybe 15 years ago, I, I, I took my parents' grandchildren, my kids, and I moved to South America with them. A and boy, did my parents learn how to Skype really, really quickly when their grandparents were living out of the country. And, and then, you know, they thought that when we moved back, they were going to take those computer skills and just throw them in the recycle bin. But, but now that we were, we were on quarantine for so long, boy, did they figure out how to get Zoom up and running in a hurry. So you, you're, you're absolutely right. These these essential skills are not going away. Gina, we want to make sure that our listeners know when your classes are offered, where they're happening, and, and how to get connected and, and things like that. We do need to take a quick commercial break, though. We're joined this morning by COC's Dean of School of Personal and Professional Learning, Gina Bogna, and she's got some amazing opportunities for a lot of us out there that, that need to either sharpen skills or start to hone a new one. We're going to continue our conversation with her after this quick commercial break. You're listening to SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. Hi, I'm Eric Goldhurst, Head of Operations for Burger King North America. Throughout this time, we've taken steps to take care of our guests. And since we know many of your jobs have been affected by this crisis, we want to help make sure you're taken care of, too. If you are looking for work, we are hiring. And there's a spot on our team for you. We know that we'll get through this together, as long as we keep taking care of each other. For more information, call 253-3283. That's 253-3283. Hey, this is Ellen Kay, and I'm so excited. Exert More Than Urgent Care is now open in Canyon Country, right near Highway 14 and Soledad Canyon Road. Exert is the ER alternative that's built and staffed by ER doctors. And with on-site lab, x-ray, and pharmacy, Exert has more medical services than most urgent care. Open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Walk in and be seen in minutes. Visit ExertUrgentCare.com for more information. That's E-X-E-R UrgentCare.com. Mission Valley Bank is a commercial bank in the Santa Clarita Valley that really puts the community into community banking. At Mission Valley Bank, we strive to be a trusted advisor to our clients, and that means being an integral part of the communities we serve. We started the Give Where You Live program to help bring awareness to our nonprofit partners. We're more than just a local business bank. In fact, we're a full-service, independent commercial bank that is locally owned, community-minded, and relationship-driven. I'm Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank, and I invite you to experience the Mission Valley Bank difference, where your success is our mission. We want to be your most valued bank. Mission Valley Bank has been named Most Trusted Advisor Business Banker by the San Fernando Valley Business Journal five years in a row and received the Business Leadership Award by the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce, Valley Industry Association, and SCV Economic Development Corporation. Visit them at their Center Point branch location or at missionvalleybank.com. Member FDIC. Got in plumbing, it's Eric. It's Mother. Can you come over right away? It's urgent. I'll be right there, Mom. <gasps> okay, I'm here. What's wrong? It's been weeks since you had a haircut, so I want to give you a nice trim. Sit down. Ooh, ow. Gee, I can see myself in the back of your head, son. Mom. Oops. What happened? Uh, never mind. It'll grow back. Uh, so uh, what's new at Dutton Plumbing, son? Well, with so many people stuck at home, there's a lot of stuff getting stuck in their pipes. So our $73 drain clearing is really keeping us busy. Wait a minute. I bet the plumber's hair is getting shaggy, too. You tell them that Mom will cut their hair for just 73 bucks. Isn't that a little high for a haircut, Mom? Well, I'll toss in the manscaping for free. Mom! DuttonPlumbing.com Mom's $73 drain clearing at DuttonPlumbing.com Manscaping not included. I'm Matt Denny, CPA, with Denny & Company, LLP, your hometown CPAs. 
Here are some tips to help you with anxiety you may have about your income tax returns for 2019. The deadlines for filing both state and federal returns have been extended to July 15. Both the state and the feds are also extending the time for making 2019 tax payments otherwise due without interest or penalty to July 15. These details keep changing, so contact us at 661-286-8860 or see our website at dennyllp.com. Hi, this is Kirk Stinson with Plumbing by Kirk, your hometown plumber. By this time, you should know where all your gas and water shutoff valves are in case of an emergency. If you don't, you should call Plumbing by Kirk. Our friendly staff will be more than happy to set an appointment for one of our technicians to come to your home and clearly mark all your shutoff valve locations. We invite you to visit our website for free plumbing advice at plumbingbykirk.com or give us a call, 263-6519. That's 263-6519. My dad is the best plumber ever. Call Plumbing by Kirk. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. You're listening to Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers, and I'm your host, Matt Watson. We're talking this morning with Gina Bogna. She is COC's Dean of the School of personal and professional learning and I mentioned in her bio that she's got a, a passion to help you get started or keep going on on your career path and and boy our conversation uh, during the break just reiterated that she is just so excited about being able to offer everything that you need in order to continue to improve your future Gina we we talked about a, a bunch of the different courses that you offer and I want to reiterate you're offering these abbreviated courses so we're not talking about these long 16 18 20 week classes we're we're talking about classes that have two four eight sessions that that help kind of launch me into a a, a career direction but you you mentioned over the break that you're offering some new classes uh, gina it, it blows my mind uh we're, we're facing budget cuts and you guys are expanding your free offerings uh can you talk to us about the new uh, math classes, the new English classes that you're offering? You bet. Um, a, a, a law passed recently that students that entered community colleges in California needed to enter in at college-level math. Well, not a lot of our students, not everybody is prepared academically to go directly into college-level algebra or statistics. And so we're offering through the School of Personal and Professional Learning eight different lower level basic math courses for students to come in and brush up on their math skills. Many students just need to get a refresher in uh, perhaps percentages or decimals. Um, how do you do fractions again? Um, and these are our six to ten hours of class each of these eight levels of class, they don't necessarily build on one another. You could come into and, and take um, algebraic expression and, uh, or perhaps take fractions and mixed numbers. Um, and this is just really exciting. We will begin offering these classes about the third or fourth week into the semester of the fall semester. So if a student is in college level math and they feel like they're falling behind and they really just need to hammer in um, you know graphs and lines um, they could come and take these classes um, for three hours or four hours and and then continue on you know with their math college level math classes or you know perhaps there's somebody at work who's um, you know, in, in a position at their job that they really need to dial in their math skills a little bit and they just need to, you know, get a refresher. It's also good for those people um, a, as well. So it isn't necessarily, um, I think initially it was designed for college students to help them uh, be prepared for their college level math, but anybody is welcome to take it. Well, yeah, that's terrific. Uh, now, you mentioned. Um that you start your courses a few weeks into the semester. So I'm guessing, uh, what would that be, later in August or, or early September? That it would probably be mid-September, and that's specifically for the math classes. Okay. All of our other classes will start, uh, are aligned with 
uh, the semester, which is the end of August is our fall semester, we're actually offering summer classes. Great. We're offering summer classes start um, next week on June 8th, and we're actually registering right now as we speak. Students can go to uh, free classes um, at canyons.edu and, and you know, get information on how to register. Um, and we offer a lot of ESL in summer. We offer computer classes, the human resources, older adults, um, the health and fitness, uh, current events and issues impacting the older adult community. Um, so really thought-provoking information, the college skills. Th that's a really good one, how to um, navigating the online classes. Mm. Um, so students who will be attending class in fall and uh, their classes will likely be 100% online. Um, and if somebody wants to prepare for that experience, whether they're going to attend College of the Canyons or whether they're going to transfer and go away to another college, anybody is welcome to take these courses. You, you know, I'm putting some of the pieces together here, and uh, when you were talking about the, the math and, and English uh, uh, kind of tune-up classes is the way I was thinking of them, preparing... That's uh, a good way of putting it. Preparing your students for, for those college-level courses, I, I would think that the summer would be a perfect time to take one of those classes, uh, you know, as, you know, maybe, like you said, math wasn't my strong suit in high school. I'm going into COC, and I've got to take a, a, a college-level math class. Maybe I could take that over the summer. Or uh, you guys also do so much for people that are looking to go back to school. Maybe I finished high school, went straight into career, been there for – five, eight, ten years, and, and now uh, with everything going on, I've realized I need to go back to school. But it's been, like I said, five, eight, ten years since I've taken an English class, a math class, uh, an opportunity to, to meet for a, a few hours, sharpen some of my skills before I jump into what can be uh, a, a little bit more uh, intimidating otherwise. I love that you're offering the uh, kind of the, the um, college skills, uh, especially now that college has shifted and, and you guys have shifted how you're doing things. So, Gina, where are these classes going to be held? Are, are they going to be exclusively online? Are there going to be any uh, site-based classes? Well, um, prior to COVID, we had very few online classes in our School of Personal and Professional Learning, and, and we hope to get back to um, – we always offer classes on the Valencia campus, the Canyon Country campus, and then we have community partners. For example, we offer a lot of ESL classes at the Castaic Library. Mm. Uh, the Green Gardener classes are offered at the Castaic Water Agency um, and, you know, a number of other partners throughout the community, um, some off-site locations. This summer and this fall, we will be virtually 100% online. And, and we offer two different modes of online learning. We offer synchronously and asynchronously. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about a synchronous class. So when you see a class listed on the schedule that it says it's online, but it meets Monday and Friday, it has a very specific day of the week and the very specific time that it meets, well, that is a synchronous class where you log on to the class during that time you will have, it will be live with your, your faculty, your instructor. You will likely have other students there with you, usually in a Zoom environment. Uh, I'm not sure they all do it a little bit differently, but, but not terribly different. Um, so, so that's synchronously. It's online, but you, you meet with the class on a very specific day and time. Um, and you may be given class assignments outside of that, but but it's a live part, online class. That's yeah. correct. And then asynchronous is where you go online and you certainly have direction from your faculty, but it is all in a virtual, it's all, it's through what we call Canvas is the mode that we deliver it in. And the faculty will post the syllabus, will post a greeting, will ask you to respond, introduce yourself. And then any time between the start and end date of that class, um, you post that information, and it's and then faculty will say that you need to respond by next Wednesday at midnight. Tell us X, Y, and Z, and then they'll also assign the homework. So, and uh, really, the crux of the synchronous is you could do that class at 2 a.m., at 10 p.m., at you know 10 o'clock in the morning, um, whatever works best for you. And so. Um, I just want to call your attention to that. So when you're on the um, schedule of classes 
online on the um, COC's website, and you see that it's all online, but then one of them shows the days of the week that it's meeting, and another one just says online. You know what that difference is. Okay, and, and, and those classes are, are really helpful for folks. Well, for example, like myself, you know, I've, I've got my regular uh, eight to five job, and then I've got a, a family to take care of, but, but then, you know, like you said, uh, 11 p.m., I could be in there uh, getting my, uh, my human resources certificate or, or doing stuff like that. If, you, if you've never taken a, an 11, or a, a 11 p.m. or a 2 a.m. Uh, college course, so you don't know what you're missing. So, Gina, what do students need to do in order to sign up and, and take one of these classes? So, first of all, um, students need to have the Internet. So that's one of your basics. Students must have access to the Internet. They need to have their own computer. Um, okay. They need to possess basic computer proficiency. So if the student really needs to know how to navigate their own computer, how to, because they'll be sent an email on how to, um, you know, where to log in. So they need to know that terminology. If they don't know that information, this is all the more reason why next year they would want to take a basic computer class in a face-to-face -face environment so that they could be prepared come the future on, on how to do that online. Um, so if, really, those are, those are your three key things. They have to have the Internet. They have to have a home computer, whether it's a laptop, potentially even an iPad uh, or some sort of tablet, and they have to c possess some computer basic skills. Okay, and then so where do folks go to, to sign up? How can I get connected? So it's uh, free classes at canyons.edu um, is an area, uh, is a site that you can go to that tells you how to register for these classes. If you want to see the various classes and get descriptions on the classes, uh, all the different certificates, we literally offer, let's see, we offer 17 different certificates. And each of those certificates is, consists of um, a variety of classes, usually somewhere between two and five classes to get a certificate, which is great to put on your resume, um, you know, the CBEST, um, you know, in citizenship, if people want to become um, a U.S. citizen. Mm. Uh, so if you want to read about what each of those certificates and those courses, the content in it, you would want to go to canyons, www.canyons.edu slash PPL, which is personal and professional learning. And that will, will show you the classes themselves. But, um, and on that website is a, is a link to be able to actually then go and register for those classes. And to register for the classes, that's um, free classes at canyons.edu. And I believe producer Sarah has already got those links up on our Facebook Live page, so go ahead and pop on and, and, and check those out. It's, uh, again, Gina, blows my mind that you guys are doing so much, offering so much uh, for, for people in, in just about any uh, kind of area of their life right now, whether they're, they're looking to get that, that, that GED or improve their, their uh, English skills, or somebody looking to get their human resources certificate. There's all different kinds of offerings. And again, providing that short uh, period of time, meat and potatoes education to, to kind of fast track your career and doing it all for free. Gina, we want to thank you so much for, for everything that, uh, that you're doing for our community and, and offering folks uh, here in and around Santa Clarita. We appreciate you coming in. Thanks so much. Thank you, Matt. Of course, and you stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to be talking to licensed marriage and family therapist Christina DeBray. We're going to get her professional take on what's been going on in and around our communities. And for more information on how COVID-19 is affecting our valley, go to hometownstation.com and click on the red banner. There you're going to find tips on the economy, health updates, special business hours, and much more. You're listening to SCVI Charter Schools, Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. 
It's allergy season again. You've tried it all, yet your sinuses continue to be a problem. Try something different, something holistic, something that will really work. Acupuncture. Kathleen Keneally is Santa Clarita's acupuncture and Nate specialist. She's been treating many of your neighbors and their children for allergies, sinuses, headaches, and pain. Find out how acupuncture can improve the quality of your life. Call Catherine Keneally for a free phone consultation. 252-4100. 252-4100. Acupuncture. It really works. Santa Clarita Valley residents now have greater access to the excellent physicians and high quality medical services for which Providence Holy Cross is known. Providence Holy Cross Health Center in Santa Clarita features state-of-the-art cancer and imaging technologies as well as board-certified physicians in a variety of medical specialties. Quality and compassion from a health care provider you can depend on. For more information, call 1-888-HEALING or visit us at Providence.org. Aloha, friends. Go check out Honu Coffee, home of the best cold brew coffee. What makes their coffee special is how their organic coffee beans are infused with nitrogen to create a smooth and delicious cup of coffee. You'll also find traditional bold coffees and island-inspired signature drinks. They're the perfect place to catch up with friends or just relax with your favorite cup of joe. Honu Coffee on Lions and Walnut in Newhall. Stop by and say aloha. And now for your convenience, a second Honu location at 23502 Lyons Avenue between Peachland and Apple. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, the Way Out Recovery SEV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call the Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. This is Maria Hauser from Family Law at Home here to provide you some tips during this uncertain time. Many of you who are co-parenting are asking, what can I do to protect my children from having to travel back and forth during the stay-at-home orders? And do custody orders have to be followed? Parties should follow their existing custody and visitation orders. Parents are encouraged to communicate with each other about the precautions they're taking to protect themselves and their children from COVID-19. However, ex-party emergency relief is available to parents when there is imminent and irreparable harm threatening their custodial rights or their safety or their children's safety, and we at Family Law at Home are here to help. Did you hear this? A Royal Suite Home Furnishings. Their Memorial Day sale is so big, they had to extend it all the way through Sunday. Yeah, this Sunday. Save 56% throughout the store on mattresses, dining sets, sofas, sectionals, recliners, bedroom sets, kids' furniture, and more. Take advantage of convenient curbside pickup. For over 40 years, Royal Suite Home Furnishings has supported the Santa Clarita community. Now it's our turn to shop local, all while saving 56%. Visit today for convenient curbside pickup at Royal Suite Home Furnishings near Sam's Club. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson. You're listening to Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. Gosh, it's it's not to pay lip service. I, I really do believe it. We uh, spoke the last couple of breaks with Gina Bogna from College of the Canyons, and then during the commercial break, uh, we were just talking about uh, how amazing it is, all the different services that College of the Canyons offers, uh, whether it's... Uh, what you typically think of, getting your, your your GEs, your general eds out of the way, getting your associate's degree. You know, I know people that ha are, are working on their bachelor's. Shane's working through the university center and, and getting his uh, his bachelor's degree, going to be graduating soon. I can tell you I've been doing, I've been working on my bachelor's for eight years now. I would have loved to do it in four, <laughs> but during those eight years, I've been in and out of COC at least three different times. They've helped me change majors. They've given me experience taking courses for CNC, for engineering work, and they've helped me transition into a communications major at Cal State Bakersfield. So whatever you want to do, they're, they're there for you, and they've got some great, visor, great advisors. They help you. They're, they're great people there. Yeah, and some innovative programs you can get a lot done, especially now when 
uh, you know, the, the immediate future of what your education is going to look like is so up in the air. COC is, is a great place to, to dial into. Uh, sorry, just a little bit of a rabbit trail there. I just continually get more and more impressed with what I hear out of COC as we talk to them every Monday. We're joined now by Christina DeBray, a licensed marriage and family therapist with a remarkable story of resilience and, and determination. You know, Christina was faced literally weeks into life with, um, with uh, a, a life-changing uh, and extensive uh, diagnosis of what would lead to trauma and, and grief and, and difficulty. And, and she has parlayed that into a career helping others, which I think is beautiful. Um, you know, we talk about lemons and turning it into lemonade. Christina has really done that and just done an amazing uh, thing. She is a trauma and grief specialist. And and I want to get her in here to talk about uh, the, the things that we're seeing in our communities around the country. Christina, good morning. Welcome in. Good morning. Christina, I mentioned that you're a trauma and grief specialist. Um, and, you know, we're seeing just grief like some of us have never experienced. And, and grief, unfortunately, like some of us are way too accustomed to experience uh, to experiencing right now. What are your thoughts on, on what we're seeing uh, here in our community uh, throughout the Southland and across the country right now? Um, well, we've just dealt with so much, I would say, as a country, but really as a, as a world. Yeah. Um, everything that's been going on. And um, I know, especially in Santa Clarita, you know, we, we've really dealt with a lot. And especially the uh, the kids and teens, and um, you know there was the difficult news last week with the substitute teacher at Saugus and the uh. shooting, the fires, the the riots that are going on here, COVID nineteen. Um, it, it, it feels like the year that lasts a century, really. <laughs> So, you know, we, we've talked many times about the different aspects of this. Is, you know, this is becoming cumulative, and this is becoming complex trauma. And so um, what we're seeing is that the central nervous system is just constantly overwhelmed with really painful and difficult information. And so um, people are going to be grieving, and they're going to be traumatized, and they're going to be dealing with that in different ways. And so um, there are so many different aspects to, you know, what the impacts of this are and how to cope with it and, um, and you know, even knowing how this impacts kids and teens versus adults. And, you know, what I, what I would say is, you know, right now we're just all sort of in that state of overwhelm and shock and, um, you know, Take your time to just absorb this information and don't be afraid to turn off the news, turn off the TV, um, just just take a break and, and step away from it all for a little bit just to decompress. I mean, I feel like even I, watching the news going on, I'm feeling like, okay, my heart's racing. I feel like someone's punched me in the stomach. It's just so difficult and so painful, and sometimes I think we can feel guilty for turning away from the news, um, but knowing, hey, we can temporarily turn away from things um, to take a break, to sort of recalibrate, um, re-energize, and then go back to it when we feel ready. Yeah, you mentioned complex trauma. Um, Christina, what advice would you give to parents when they're, they're talking to their kids? Um, I know I mentioned my, my son, uh, who's a high school senior a lot here on the show, and I found it, uh, gosh, it's interesting isn't the word, but uh, it, it, as I step, step back and look at my own situation, it is interesting. You know, my son uh, dealt with the shooting at, at Saugus very firsthand this year, and his response was to step in and work to do something to improve the situation. And then his senior year was basically canceled. And, and we talked about that last night. He says, Dad, this was supposed to be the best year of my life. What's going on? Um, but he dealt with that, you know, uh, again, by, by helping others. We're actually going to be talking to, par to Pars a little bit later in the week about what he's doing to help uh, the kids at his school. And, 
And then you mention a, a, a teacher out at his school being arrested uh, just last week. And, and uh, again, he's, he's working through it, working through it. And then last night, with everything going on, um, a, a, and a, a, a person that he never met, otherwise would have never known about, was, uh, was tragically killed in Minneapolis, uh, he sat down and finally cried last night, and as a parent, I didn't know how to walk him through that. Do you have any advice to to parents that, as they're trying to help process this with their kids? I mean, at, at some point, there just are no words. It's just about holding space and feeling. It's, mm. you know, I love you. I'm here for you. I know this is terrible, and, you know, I, I'm here. And just giving that comfort and holding that space. You know, I think um, oftentimes as parents, we can sort of feel, oh, no, I don't want my kids exposed to this kind of stuff. And so I'm going to just turn the TV off and not talk about it. And, okay, let's go, you know, go for a walk or play with the dog or whatever it is. Let's go get some ice cream. And while that can be well-intentioned, you're actually um, sort of just shoving things you know, like shoving it into the emotional living room to be dealt with later. Right. So um, it's important to hold the space for that and say and and, and not try to fix it. Mm. Um, and, and just I know, I know it's upsetting because it is upsetting and it, it's overwhelming for so many reasons. And um, and so, we, you know, we want to um, teach our kids that that. We, we want a role model for our kids that it's okay to hold space for these type of things in life. So important. We don't necessarily have to have the answers to give to our kids. We don't have to know what to say, but, but to be there and, and be maybe that quiet strength for them is, is really important. You know, all of us are struggling so much with so much um, and, and, and it can be hard. We, we need some help sometimes. We need to rely on each other. So if you are struggling, I want to encourage you to reach out. Reach out to your health care provider. You can reach out to Christina. You know, she provides uh, tremendous uh, support to those that need it. You can call her at 661-513-4857. Her website is on our Facebook live feed, ChristinaDebray.com. Again, 661-513-4857. Christina, thanks again for joining us. That is all the time that we have for today. I want to thank our other guests, Holly Schroeder from the SCV Economic Development Corporation, Gina Bogna from COC's School of Personal and Professional Learning. Uh, join us again tomorrow. I thank you for joining us today. We will be back every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. We're going to be talking to the mayor tomorrow, so go ahead and send me your questions now. I know you've got a lot. You're listening to SCVI Charter Schools, Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson, and this is your hometown station, KHTS. <laughs>